베스트 시몬스는 국제정치라는 거대한 관계 속에서 인간 존엄성을 연구하는 학자입니다. 그의 정치는 인권을 중심으로 돌아가죠. 특히 이 책에 전 세계가 주목했습니다. 우리에게 인권 감수성을 선물한 투쟁의 역사를 알아보는 시간. 세계 인권 선언의 탄생부터 오늘날에 이르기까지. 고난과 극복의 서사시가 지금 위대한 수업에서 펼쳐집니다. Hello, EBS viewers. Welcome to We Day Han Suop Great Minds. I'm Beth Simmons, professor of law and political science at the University of Pennsylvania. International human rights have always been an attractive but an elusive matter. What are international human rights? Human rights are standards that recognize and protect the dignity of all human beings. It's as simple and it's as difficult as that. Not everyone agrees, though, on what the essentials of human dignity include. One would probably agree that it includes the right to life. But does that include the right to an abortion? Does that include the right of the state to use capital punishment? People would always also probably agree to the right to physical integrity, the right to not be tortured, for example. But what about terrorists? And what about opponents of the state? There might even be a right to basic sustenance for human dignity, the right to food, leisure, work, maybe basic health care. But in poor countries, these are very hard to provide. And even in some wealthy countries, like the United States, access to these rights sound like socialism. Individual rights not to be discriminated against are important, too, on the basis of certain things you can't change uh, by the nature of where you were born, your religion, your nationality, maybe your race or your gender. So how we get into these sensitive issues is part of the difficulty of recognizing and realizing international human rights. The Enlightenment put human rights on a much more secular basis and a universal kind of a footing, not dependent on culture or context or religion. The context in which the Enlightenment took place was one of very repressive monarchies that recognized the divine right of kings and a hierarchical repressive medieval Christian church. Political participation, the right to express views in a parliament and not just through a king, became very important for owners of property. The Industrial Revolution had a very important impact as well. The liberty of the Enlightenment was not enough. Because during the Industrial Revolution, there was, it was a, quite apparent that there were yawning inequalities opening up between workers and the owners of the means of production. And worker exploitation became quite widespread and opening up significantly. So new rights were demanded on the part of workers and their organizations. They revolted against the inequitable implications of totally free property rights. They rejected the idea that free markets and free trade could advance human rights for all people. They wanted universal suffrage, not just suffrage that's based on property ownership. They were against slavery, and they were against slave-like conditions for workers. Women also began to demand political and social rights as well. And it was during the Industrial Revolution and towards the end of the Industrial Revolution when the idea that we should have uh, laws in place to protect child labor and there should be a right to public education for children became widespread as well. The 20th century caused an acceleration along these lines of rights development. And one reason is the kind of suffering that was loosed during the Great Depression of the 1930s. This was the worst depression in modern times, and it reverberated around the world. In the United States, in 1933, at its worst point, unemployment rates in the United States were about 25 percent, 
with more than 11 million people looking for work. And the important thing is, these people had no visible means of support, no visible means of earning a living, supporting their families, or even having enough to eat at times. And this seriously instilled fear, it imposed want, and most importantly, it created human humiliation. The Second World War had an important impact, and its impact was felt particularly on civilians. The Second World War led to civilian deaths on a massive scale. Worldwide, about 60 million civilians died from very direct hostilities. And that was about a third of the world's population at, at that time. In China, the war resulted in, 20, in 15 to 20 million civilians dead. In Korea, about a half a million, or about 2% of the population of civilians had been killed. And then in Japan, this number totaled three quarters of a million people, largely due to the dropping of the atomic bomb. The Holocaust was an important lesson as well. It was part of the wartime experience that clearly uh, illustrated how powerful states could systematically and horrifically violate the human rights of a broad range of human beings, especially minority groups that were not protected. The uh, experience led clearly to the provisions of what I'll be talking about much more today, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. That declaration pronounced a right to life, a right to enjoy one's culture, and it banned slavery. 